Hey guys, it's Shane from VegHead, and in this video I'm going to show you my hydroponic system. Now I built this system myself, um, and I got the idea from other online videos showing other hydroponic systems, and I chose this design because it allowed for a lot of plants to be grown in a small amount of space. And I just wanted a bunch of plants growing at the same time so that some could be harvested with others on their way. Here's the PVC piping I'm going to be using, which I cut with a chop saw. All the piping is going to be connected with elbow joints and then it's going to be mounted to the frame using these steel fittings that I've drilled into the structure here. The piping is going to loop around the tower structure as you'll see later on. And here are all the elbow joints that are going to make it possible. Each of these PVC pipe lengths has seven holes cut into it, and there's four of them in total, so all together we're gonna have 28 spots to grow plants. All right, so here's the finished structure all glued together. I used the PVC glue to make it all happen, and if you've ever worked with the stuff before, you know it can be really tricky to get it all right, so I had to do a lot of preparation planning, um, marking all the spots that I was gonna make sure the joints were glued in. Here are some of the plants that I've pre-started and as soon as they have a little bit of growth on them, I'm gonna transplant them into the net pots. And here's where all the magic happens. This is the storage tote that holds all the water that I mix with the fertilizer, as well as the hydro sparkle, which keeps everything clean. And then it runs up a pipe, comes to the top. I've just duct taped this to hold it in place and the water runs down, trickles through all the pipe, and then comes back out this big um, collector and then goes back right into the toad again. So it's a closed loop system. And a really cool thing about the returning water is that I've made it so the hose sits just above the water level in the storage tote so that when it falls in, it splashes and aerates the water. So you can see here the return hose is sitting above the water level. And then when it splashes, it brings some oxygen into the water and that's good for the plants. Now for the water pump, I've got an Everbuild submersible utility pump and it's 1 6th horsepower with 20 feet of vertical strength or head, which is something you have to keep in mind when you're designing your hydroponic system because I had a weaker pump before um, that pumped out sufficient amount of water, but when I had to raise it, to the height I had to for this design, which is around eight feet, um, it just didn't have enough strength to get the water up there. So that's something you need to keep in mind when you're buying a water pump. Here are my fertilizers. Um, it's a two part system. So you got grow A and grow B from Dutch Nutrient Solutions. And I just bought them from my local hydroponic shop. And Here's my pH testing kit. Um, I have the liquid one where I do a drop in a sample of the water, shake it up, and then compare it to the colors. And that just helps me test it every day to make sure that the pH is in the right range for optimal growth. Here's my pH corrector, which is phosphoric acid. Two things to keep in mind is how often you check the pH, which is every day because it can change quite dramatically. And the other thing is how often you should change your water. I change it every week. That's what I've found to work best. It also is what other people online say works best for them. When I add the nutrients every week to the new water, I make sure to follow the instructions on the nutrient bottle of how much I should add. So based on the plant size, if they're little plants like they are here, um, I'm going to add a quarter of the full solution that it recommends just because the roots aren't as developed yet and they won't be able to withstand the strong chemicals if you add the full dose. And then over time, as the plants grow, you can slowly increase the amount of fertilizer you add until you're at the full amount that it recommends. I shot this footage in February. As you can see, there's still snow on the ground if you look out the window. Um, it was fine, the plants did okay, even with such low levels of sunlight. Um, and then now this footage is current, which is in May, 
and you can see the plants have exploded. Um, this is a tomato plant you're looking at right here. It's huge. This is a basil plant you're looking at. It's exploded. It's all the way up to the top. I've also started to harvest some of these things, including the basil and the Swiss chard, both red and white and kale. I do little clippings almost every day, if not every other day, and add them to my smoothie. And it's really cool because they just keep on growing. They'll shoot up new leaves. The leaves will get big and then you'll be able to cut them. And it's something you can grow all year round, which is awesome. This was a really cool project to do. I had a lot of fun making it and it's something that pays off. So here I have some sweet potatoes that I'm growing. Those won't go into the hydroponic system, but I'm gonna put them outside of my garden when it's warm enough. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to check the description below for all the details on how to build it. And lastly, don't forget to eat your greens.